Hello internet, welcome to a very poorly set up shot. So I have this dresser here um, and I need to do some modification to it. So I'm gonna try to do it myself. I've never really done this kind of thing before. It might turn out completely terribly, but I mean, this was a cheap thing I got for like $40 from the Habitat store. It's not like a super high quality piece of furniture. The veneer is starting to chip off the top. It's like very sticky when it opens and closes. Not a huge fan of the fixtures that are on here. Um, but the main reason that I need to do some modifications to it. Let me show you. Main reason is this guy right here. Hello, Penger. Do you have anything to say to the internet? Mm, just that you're destroying my entire house? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've had to make a ton of modifications for my bratty cat. And one of the main things that I've realized he likes to do is if he can access these totes that I store my fabric in and absolutely demolish them, he will. Um, and I'd like to put this dresser in this empty space down here for some extra storage and to keep my modem and my router in there but with the width that it is right now it juts out just enough that panger can totally jump on top destroy hear that scratching that is him scratching a door um it, he could absolutely destroy those fabric things and also probably jump on top of this curio tab cabinet which is a little bit tippy which is bad for the things i have in it and might lead him to like fall down to his death. I don't know. So long story short, what I need to do is I need to shorten this so it fits a little bit better in the space I have for it. I'm going to try to chip off the top bit and paint it, I guess, just so it's a little bit prettier. Um, I'll probably eventually get new hardware for the front. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I don't cut any fingers off. Okay, so I was able to remove this backing here. Wasn't too hard. I did eventually switch to using a tiny crowbar instead of a screwdriver. And so now what I'm going to do is just slide these little dividers out. And then we'll proceed from there. Pinger, what are you doing? I'm having to do all of this because of you, you know. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've marked the line that I'm going to cut along. Um, I'm also going to take some clear packaging tape and tape along there so things don't splinter too much. And I'm going to get a circular saw and give it my best shot. So this is just going to be the video of me with weird angles, I guess. So should I be doing this outside? Yes. Should I be doing it in a garage? Yes. Or maybe in a basement? Yeah. Um, but it's cold and snowy outside and I don't have a garage, and I can't carry this down to the basement by myself. So we're just doing it in here, um, but I've got a tarp down. I'll vacuum up afterwards, I guess. It'll be fine. Hello, we're back. I'm aware that my hair is a proper mess. Whatever. Um, so I had to take a pause because the blade I had in there before was actually a plywood blade. So it was starting to smoke just the tiniest bit and set off my fire alarm and um, just wasn't making a very clear cut. So I went to get a blade that's actually meant for hardwood. And so hopefully things go better this time. Okay, I think I have it rotating the wrong way, maybe? Hello. It's several hours later. There was an issue with the saw. I was, like, rotating the wrong way for some reason. My dad and I can't quite figure it out. We just, like, flipped the saw blade over, and it's working fine. Um, I've decided to take the tape off because it's making it kind of hard for me to see the lines. Um, my phone is almost out of battery, too, so now you guys are going to be... Um, 
given an even weirder angle than you have been given. Okay, Whew. I'm out of breath. Finally got the circular saw to work, but then for this middle um, shelf here, I had to use my scroll saw, but the blade on it was a little bit dull, and so I had to kind of force it a little bit. So it's definitely a bit ugly back there, but whatever, it'll work. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reattach these legs so I can flip it over and then clean off the top. Okay, I've reattached the legs. It's pretty sturdy. I mean, it's a little bit wobbly, but it'll be okay. Um, so now I'm going to use this crowbar and this hammer to remove this veneer that was already chipping, so I might as well just get rid of it completely. Okay, so I took a pause from chipping off the veneer because it was starting to get tricky, but I did some research and I found a trick that actually works pretty well. Um, so what you do is you get a towel and you soak it in some hot water so it's damp and then you spread it over the thing that you're taking the veneer off of and leave it there. Um, the website I found said for two hours. I left it for about an hour and then afterwards that kind of helps, um, I don't know, break down the adhesive or whatever. Um, but then what you do is you take that same damp towel and you take a an iron on its hottest setting and you kind of steam up the veneer and then use like a putty knife or something like this to scrape it up. And it's working far more smoothly um, with a much less effort on my part than what I was doing before. So I wish I had actually just done my research first. Okay, so I'm putting the damp towel over and steam, baby. Okay. Just do that for several seconds. And then we'll see if it actually works now that I have a camera going. Knowing my luck, probably not. But then what you do is you take your putty knife, try to get like, there you go. Try to get a corner of it underneath there, and then you just tap. Easy as. Okay, so I've gotten most of the veneer off, finally. It's looking pretty good, actually. I think what I'm going to do is put the towel back on it for another hour or so, because there are still these little bits here that are kind of hard to get off. But I think if they get a, like, have a little bit more time to soften up and soak, it'll be good. And then I just have to decide how I want to do this, if I want to do just stain it or paint it or try something else. So that's what I'm going to think about. Um, next thing what I'm going to do is clean the sawdust out of the inside here. And then I'm just going to wood glue the backing back on. I know that I should nail it, but I just can't be bothered and wood glue will work just fine. Hello, it's the next day. Everything's looking good. I went and I got some sandpaper. So I'm going to sand this down on the top and then we're going to do something pretty cool to change the color. The sanding is all done. I just used some 220 grit sandpaper just to kind of smooth things out a little bit. So I have a damp cloth here and I'm going to wipe off the dusty bits from the top. And see, doing this almost makes me wish I was going to be staining this with a light stain because just even this bit of water shifting the color makes this wood grain look pretty, really pretty. 
But don't worry, we're not painting it. We're not getting rid of the wood grain entirely. We're gonna try something a little bit different. There's one little bit here where the veneer is still on there. So what I've been doing for these kind of stubborn bits is I just have a razor blade. Um, where did it go? And I've just been kind of using the razor blade to gently get the last little sticky bits off. So when I was thinking about how I wanted to refinish this top part here, at first I was thinking I would just paint it with some extra paint I have lying around. But then I do really like the way wood grain looks, but I didn't really want to go and buy stain. I, like, this project is already, like, it's not that expensive, but it's more expensive than I'd really like it to be. Um, so then I remember the one thing I had seen online at one point was using fabric dye to change the color of wood. So you can kind of get bright colors, but still see through to the wood grain. So I thought that was really cool. And because I love fabric dyeing, I have a ton of it. Um, so this is just, I took some fiber reactive Procyon dye that I got from Dharma Trading Company. I got like, I don't know, a tablespoon of it, mixed it with some water. This is their color hot pink. Um, honestly, I wish it was a lighter pink color, but this is what I had and I'm trying to not buy new stuff if I don't have to. So the way that this works is, so the way that this works is I'm just going to take this and paint it on the top. And then I think I'll probably do a couple of coats of it, let it dry between layers and then just seal it with, I'm going to use some Mod Podge. You could use some polyacrylic sealer if that's what you have. Um, and then you'll have a nice, hopefully colorful furniture top. Let's see what happens. Oh, this is looking really, oh, this is pretty. Here, I should get the camera at a better angle so you can actually see what's happening. So I was thinking this kind of almost looks like beet juice or, I don't know. When it goes on like this, it kind of looks like Kool-Aid, which is kind of cool. But it'll dry a lighter color, which I'm actually happy about. I was worried the hot pink would be too intense. And honestly, this would be cool to do an entire furniture piece with this kind of dyeing process, but it took me so long to get all the veneer off of this top. There's no way I'm going to try to get the veneer off of this whole entire cabinet. Okay, so I've got my first coat done. I'm actually really pleased with this color. Um, you can tell it's splotchy if you want something that's kind of that's, you know, a perfect smooth finish. This is not going to be it. There's clearly some places where it absorbs the color better than others. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it has to do with the adhesive that was on it for the veneer or something like that. But that's okay. It is what it is. I think it's still kind of fun, though. Okay, so now I'm going to let this first coat dry. I'll probably turn a fan on to help it dry out a little bit quicker. And I'll come in with the second coat afterwards. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes. I have my ceiling fan on. So this is completely dry at this point. It's a little bit redder than I had hoped, but it still will fit within the general color scheme of everything and still looks pretty nice. So I think I'm gonna do one more coat of the dye before sealing it. Okay, so I'm done with the dye part of it. I could do another coat, I guess, um, but I'm worried that would make it a little bit too dark. And I, I like this color. It's nice, a nice bright pinky red color. So now the next step is to seal it. 
Um, it's probably better to use like an actual like polycrylic sealer, but I don't want to buy that, so I'm just going to use some Mod Podge. So I'm just taking this cheapy brush that apparently has a bunch of hair stuff to it, black light. And I'm going to just put a coat of it on here. I'll probably have to do a couple coats, honestly. second coat of Mod Podge to dry. Oh, just noticed a bit of a drip. So while I wait for the second coat of Mod Podge to dry, I actually, um, yeah, so after the first coat dried, I sanded it down and then added another second coat of Mod Podge that is currently drying up here. It's looking pretty good. I think I might eventually, if I can get some like high gloss Mod Podge, add just another layer so it's a little bit shiny. But while I wait for it to dry, I'm going to go through, there are some places that have some scuffs along the side here, and I'm just going to take, I have a wood stain marker, and I'm just going to kind of touch up these little scratchy bits. So this is like the easiest thing you can possibly do if you thrift something wood that's got some scuffs on it. It's literally just you color it on there, leave it for a little tiny bit, and then you wipe it off. And it looks so much better. Okay, and I I gave this about a minute, and I'm just going to go through with this shop towel and wipe along. And it's just going to pick up the extra stuff that didn't have, like, non scratch wood to stick to. Um, I probably shouldn't have left it for this long. It's sticking to the veneer more than I had expected it to, but that's okay. It's at least better than it was. Top is drying, scuffs are covered, and now we're going to do kind of the like wild card thing for this cabinet. I wasn't originally planning on doing anything to the front, but then I thought I might as well. I mean, it looks nice, but like this is just, it's just cheap veneer on it. It's not like hardwood or anything. Um, so we're going to do some decoupage on it. Just because why not? If you're mad about it, that's fine. You can be mad. I often get mad about people who take beautiful antique furniture and paint it or whatever. Um, but this was in beat. It was, it was pretty beat up. So I think it's fine. Um, yeah. So my plan is, I've got this absolutely ridiculous fabric. I actually made a jumpsuit out of it a couple of years ago. Um, it's like kind of a marbled look, but it has sea monsters and unicorns and swans on it. Um, so I've got quite a bit of it. My plan is to just um, use some Mod Podge to decoupage, which is the fancy word for stick fabric, to these two door panels here, um, and maybe these two door panels up here as well. I've already swapped out the knobs. They're looking super cute. Um, yeah, so let's see how this goes. My first step is I'm going to take my sandpaper and just kind of sand over this to help stuff stick a little bit better, I guess. Um, I'm not sure even if it will help at all, but it might as well. to get straight lines because um, it'll just follow the grain of the fabric. Now I'm going to 
get my handy dandy Mod Podge. Paint the door. So it's been a little bit. These are mostly dry at this point. Um, one thing that I'm wishing I had done now that I'm seeing is that um, the brown from underneath does end up showing through a little bit. So probably would have been nice if I had painted it a light color underneath or something like that, which to be fair is something I saw online as advice, but then I just ignored it. So it's a little bit splotchy, you know, it's not as, it's not exactly what I wanted it to look like, but it's still, it'll still be fine, especially from a distance. Um, so some tips that I figured out is it's good to do this in sections, especially on these big panels like this. So like do a little bit underneath, put it down, put the Mod Podge on top, do another section. Another thing that I found was helpful was to get this putty knife and use that to kind of smush the fabric over to the edges so we get some crisp lines. So next, what we're going to do is I have a brand stinking new razor blade here, and I'm going to go along the edges here and cut the extra fabric away. Okay, so I've removed the extra. From far away, it looks decent. From close up, you can definitely see the places where um, I didn't cut as straight as I could have, so there's a little bit of weirdness happening. You can see the places where the, you can see the brown through the white on here. Um, so, you know, not perfect, but this is the first time I'm doing this type of project, so there's a learning curve for everything. So now what I'm going to do is sand it down um, to kind of smooth it out a bit, and then I'm going to put another coat of Mod Podge on it. Okay, it's been a long weekend. It's not perfect, but it is really cute. My dresser is done. Let me show you. There she is. everybody thanks for watching definitely not perfect here are the things that I've learned main thing is if you're going to be putting fabric that has white on it onto a brown cabinet you really have to paint the thing white first or some kind of light color because if you look up close there's definitely some splotchy spots where the brown shows through and it makes it look like dirty so that's not ideal but you know what? It's fine. You learn. Um, it's cute. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following along with all my DIY projects. Pocket, do you have anything to say? Just that you're the sweetest, cutest boy. Want me to go snuggle with you some more? Okay. Alright, I have a cat demanding snuggles. Okay. Say bye to the internet. Bye, everybody.